is uh, causing a bigger and bigger divide from people being able to accomplish that. And we have such incredible social proof, clinical proof. Uh, but do you want to just maybe share real quick before we get started, just kind of like what your experience was just the other day? Yeah. That's cool. Great, by the way. You look amazing. <laughs> Well, you know, uh, like I told you, I, I went to my doctor. I haven't gone for a while for my checkup. Um, I go to the VA, and um, when the nurse saw me, which she knows who I am, she just couldn't believe. As soon as she saw me, she said, "Wow, what have you been doing?" She was she was so shocked, and I started talking to her about what I was doing, and she just could not believe um, the results that I was getting. We started talking about she started talking about detoxing, and we got into the conversation of cleansing and you know, what she was doing was totally different than what I was doing. And, and that conversation went so well that she says, I need some information. I, I, I need to know what you're doing. I need to, I need to get healthy. And as we were talking, my doctor walked in and she, my doctor is a really hard doctor. She's always on my case about losing weight and everything. As soon as she saw me, she goes, holy, but you know what word she said. I don't want to repeat it here. <laughs> She could not believe what, what happened to me because she'd been on me to trying to lose weight. And she, you know, she was very hard on me. And uh, she was so happy to see my change that we started talking and we went into her office and she said, she didn't even start examining me, Dave. She just started talking to me. She wanted to know what was going on. And I said, well, you know, one of the things that I'm doing, I'm putting more minerals in my body because it's so important. And she goes, whoa, time out. What are you talking about minerals? Most of my patients don't know anything about that. They never talk about minerals and how important it is. And, and we just kept talking about telomeres, about minerals, about, and she calls in another doctor because of the things that I was saying. She goes, none of my patients have ever talked to me about science the way you're talking to me. Where are you learning all this stuff? That's crazy. And she was so, so excited. And here I am, and you're talking about an aha moment. Here I am talking to two doctors one of the doctors, I said, well, you know, I've been improving my telomeres. He goes, what's that? And she goes, you don't know what telomere is? That's the number one thing today. Everybody should be trying to improve their telomeres, man. I don't know a lot about it, but that's what people are talking about these days. And it's amazing. And well, I'm sitting here talking to two doctors. And they're looking at me like I'm teaching them something. And I was in awe. I was not, I was not waiting for that moment for me to be expressing what I've learned here in a short six months to two doctors, and they're looking at me like deer <laughs> with the headlights on, wide open, paying attention to me going, oh my God, this is crazy. I, 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 wow, I am so happy for you. She was just, I did not expect her reaction. It was something so surreal for me to be able to speak to two doctors, and they were just like, wow. And she said, you know how much weight you've lost? When she looked at my record, she goes, and how long? I said six months. She goes, what? She goes, you. I said, look, I'm sending you to the lab because I need to see. Because I was pre-diabetic, I need to see your lab work. I need to see. I I am so so excited. So, you know, it just made my day that I can speak to two you know doctors that are probably well. I thought they would be smarter than me about health, but now I realize that we have something that it it was like to me it was like wow this is a secret that we got to put out there to the world. So, I, you know, to, to, yeah. for two doctors to be impressed about what we're doing, it was just so amazing and so surreal for me. Life-changing. Yeah. How many pounds are you down now? Um, I'm down 80, 81 pounds. 81. 81, is that what you said? 81 now. Nice. Congratulations, Guillermo. I mean, that's profound. If you guys let that sink in, Paul Zane Pilzer said, look, the next millionaires will be created in the wellness industry. And it's called intellectual distribution, letting other people know about things they don't know about yet. And here you are in the healthcare professionals, you know, gone to lots of schooling, sacrificed lots of their lives to understand how to help people, you know, improve their health. And uh, here you are teaching them. And you haven't gone to any medical school, right? I mean, so now that we have that bottled up and, and we have literally a way to, I would say first transform people's lives, but it's a career that could be our business. That could be our, you know, our second source of income or our primary income for me. It's, it's like pays for everything. It's my dream life, the money that comes from this, this business opportunity. But yeah, that, I bet that was an epiphany moment for you where you realize, 
wow, it's kind of like connecting that gap. Everything I've been hearing, everything I've been hearing on the trainings and what I've been learning and listening to, it's more profound than I realized, right? And uh, what an incredible opportunity. Well, thank you, Guillermo. I didn't mean to put you on the spot like that, but that's going to bless a lot of people's lives because you shared that. Professor uh, Guillermo. What's that? <laughs> Professor Guillermo. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> you guys, we can learn more nowadays than you can in a classroom setting by far because our passion and our focus is extreme around one particular thing rather than a wide field of things that may even be unrelated. I mean, we are, we are honed in and, and really focused. So some of the greatest things that have come about were not, you know, brought through the traditional education. It was because of people's passion and their focus and tapping in and uh, the masterminding and all that. So, so, all right, so let's talk about the business behind that. I'm just gonna mute the background noise out and uh, get started here. I wanna go over something a little bit different today, something that we've been doing for the last still, few weeks, three, four weeks, and uh, it's really become very effective in helping people to see clearly this opportunity and, and how to frame it up in a way that we're not, uh, you know, in one of the terms that we're using self-betraying or self-sabotaging. Nobody wants to set a goal and then sabotage themselves in the pursuit of that goal. Yet so many people do not reach their goals. And it's because of things that blindside us. So I wanna go over a template that's evolved and gotten to the point where it is and uh, what we've been doing in basically a one-on-one -on -one basis with you know, our team members and, and supporting our team. So I'm gonna share my screen here and go through this. And Jojo, you and I have done a lot of these uh, recently. And while I'm setting up the screen, do you just wanna share your thoughts on that and then you know, jump in at any point as I'm going through this template? Like, I want you guys to have a notepad and paper out. And this is recorded. So we'll put the, the link on the Facebook group and Forever Pack Business Group. Um, but this is uh, something that you're really gonna wanna internalize and start to incorporate in, in building your organization, your business. Well, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, so first, you know, Dave, just thanks for everything and all the time and effort that you've been putting into, into the team. And, you know, it's, it's funny because we do this on a big level, like where everyone's here together. But when we sit down individually with someone else, the ability that we have now to be able to see where the self-sabotage comes in, see where the, the puzzle pieces haven't come together. I mean, we've had all of these puzzle pieces all this time kind of floating out in the air and we'd grab one and do one here and do one there. But now that we've put them all together, it's, it's really truly a blueprint of how to um, start your day, the income producing activities you do throughout the day, how your why, your compelling vision weaves into that and how you, how we um, tell ourselves stories to get us away from the thing that we said we wanted. So it's all of these pieces put together where we can absolutely see um, a clear laid out blueprint. Like it's a map from here to there. All you gotta do is stay on the road. <laughs> yeah. right? um, and so I think that as we're going through this, each person that we've been working with has had such huge ahas and light bulb moments and, and to be able to see um, where they've been going off the road and how to steer themselves back on. And so thank you for doing all of this. It's been really, it's been really awesome. Yeah, you're welcome. And it's been awesome doing it together and just watching it. And they're real results, right? Their aha moments are tangible things that are causing behavior changes because they're seeing things differently. When we see things, you know, when we change the way we look at things, the things we look at change. And they're making the changes. They're making the adjustments. It doesn't mean that it's always easy and they get it 100% every time. But now they're consciously aware. And it's all right here, you guys. On this page, we have the whole blueprint on identifying, moving to the next level, knowing where people are stuck, we can figure it all out right here. And, and I love uh, that we got the message yesterday from one of the girls that we've been working with who said, I did this really awesome thing and it was so good. And, and then I just talked myself out of doing anything else because I had didn't, done such a good thing. And so instead of continuing on and doing good, more good things, I talked myself out of it. And I realized I was talking myself out of it and I went back and did some more good things. So it was just a really good awareness of, 
um, you know, that piece of the puzzle where we self-sabotage. It's, it was so good. I was like, yes. <laughs> yeah. You know, we do things because of the, the, the way we see things. Right. And I want to use Tony Robbins example of the elephant. And he said, you know, I went to the circus. I saw this big elephant that had a little rope around it and it was staked into the ground with a, you know, a small stake that that elephant could have ripped out of the ground easy. It could have pulled the whole tent down, you know, a massive elephant. And so why doesn't it? Why does it allow itself to be restricted and confined to the short rope on such a tiny stake? And it's because of its identity. It's accepted an identity for itself. So go back, you know, how many years back did you accept the current identity and concept that you have of yourself right now? He said the way they got the elephant to do that was when it was young and it wasn't as powerful. It was uh, dependent on its, you know, on, you know, so many things as a baby elephant. And they just put a, a rope around it and a uh, uh, stake into the ground that this baby elephant could not pull out. And the baby's trying to pull, you know, that stake out of the ground and it's just frustrated. It feels restricted, but it doesn't want to be restricted. And it's fighting and pulling and pulling and fighting day after day, week after week. And then eventually something clicks in the elephant's brain. It makes a decision that it can't pull it out of the ground. And so because it's taken on that identity, even though the elephant becomes massive and powerful and could pull the entire circus tent down, its identity and its concept of itself is causing it to do actions in a certain way. And it's now bound by its concept of itself, not by the rope. It's not bound by the rope anymore. The rope could easily be broken. It's the identity that it chose and made a decision to accept based on external factors that the baby didn't even know. The baby elephant didn't even know that those external factors and the way they were set up were framing up its own belief in itself. So these outside factors that are in our lives, uh, the people, the shows that we watch, the teachers we've had, the siblings, the strangers, the TV shows, the magazines, all of these have been like that rope that we're tied to unknowing like the elephant and we're just kind of helpless and then at some point you made a decision in your life to take on that concept something snapped in your brain and you made the decision to take on that concept of yourself but that was all framed up around thoughts and images it's not who you are you just made the decision unknowingly like the elephant to be tied to that stake and allow it to control your life without even knowing that so we're ignorant to that fact and, you know, I've spent 14 years understanding the principles and reading a lot and doing a lot of personal, you know, um, deep thinking and just uh, allowing myself to be mentored by people who do know that that rope was placed there by something else that, you know, caused all these things. And so for the last 14 years, I've been internalizing things. And, and I, I, what we can do is facilitate your coming up with a new concept of yourself based on your trust and what we're gonna share with you here today. Uh, you know, if you wanna spend the next 14 years learning and gathering all that stuff, or right now you can just make the decision to trust and play at 100%, and we will totally condense and facilitate that, that amount of time. So what I wanna do is go through this step by step. We may go over the hour, I'm good with that. You know, you can go back and watch the recording if you've got something else that's a bigger priority in your life right now. But we're gonna go through this and, and complete it. Um, and then I don't have this to where you can go print it up yet. There's still some evolving and, and working out and refining and making it clearer and clearer. Um, but we're super, super close. All right. So uh, once we have it, we'll get it to where you can download it and, and start utilizing it for yourself and your team. All right. So what we want to do is we want to frame up that new concept of ourselves, right? So that, that image that we're holding for ourselves but we've got to do it in a very specific way because we want to utilize this and strategically set it up, not just in some random way that serves a certain area of our life and that really isn't as impactful. We want to get as much impact out of this reframing that we can. So there are certain principles and laws that have to be incorporated into this new concept. And so we're going to talk about your own personal dreams and the concept of yourself. But we've also got to have other dynamics framed up in this vision. So we're vision casting here. We're going to use our imagination. We're going to utilize what um, Neville Goddard teaches about how feeling is the secret and how we can 
uh, change the concept of ourselves, which automatically alters our future. So we're going to change the way we view ourselves. We're going to give ourselves allowance and room and space to recreate ourselves. And the Bible is so like, like the, the vast majority of things that are in the Bible and the Quran and other scriptures out there and, and, and uh, gurus, this is what they're talking about. These dynamics that need to be at play in our lives in order to create that feeling of purpose, impact, feeling fulfilled. And, and, and creating abundance in our lives and other people's uh, lives as well. So there's just different dynamics that have to be in place. So everything that's on here, none of it's optional, none of it's negotiable. These are all fundamentals to creating the life of your dreams through the vehicle of isogenics. <clears throat> all right, so we're gonna start out with this $500 a month in cycles. So cycles, I'm not going to go into detail and in trying to explain the compensation plan. Otherwise, we'll be here for two hours. So uh, $500 a month in organic cycles. That's the passive residual income that's going to be leading to our freedom day. So we need to make sure we're building that specifically. No bonuses, no you know things like that. This is the, the passive residual income. And the reason it's 500 is what we're putting on here is because there's a principle around that $500 of extra. This is extra income that's coming in, you guys. So I'm going to put extra here. And they said if 50% of marriages could have been saved if there was an extra $500 a month coming in because it would have reduced the negativity and the focus on that negativity, which causes arguments and things like that, and would have brought more peace and building positivity around a relationship. And there's other factors behind that as well, but we're going with that $500 a month. Now, what we want to do is we want to frame this up as though all of this is already happening in our lives. So this is instilling and instituting an incredibly powerful principle when we frame this up as an already accomplished fact. So right here, it says, I'm so happy and grateful now. So I'm so happy and grateful now that I have $500 or more in organic cycles coming into my bank account every month from isogenics. Not going to, we're using our imagination and we're instituting a principle here. So, so we come up with this, I'm so happy and grateful now that I'm receiving over $500 or more every month in cycles from my isogenics business. I'm so happy and grateful because, so then we go into bullet points as to what that is. I'm able to, this is an evolving process and it's been fun to watch how people evolve and what they, there's some commonality in this. Like what are the things that are happening in your life? Not generic terms like I'm happier now. It's getting into the events and the scenarios that are describing in detail. You wouldn't say to a contractor, Hey, go build a house for me that I love coming home to every day. And that's comfortable. And then you send them on their way and they go build the house. And then when they're finished, you show up at the house and you hate it. You don't like coming home to it every day because you were too generic in your description to the contractor. You didn't give him specific details of how you wanted that house to look. And so uh, imagine describing the detail of what makes a comfortable house for you. You want wood floors or tile floors. You want granite countertops or you want, you know, you can go on and on about the detail. That's what we want to get here is what's so awesome. Why is it so exciting? Why are you so happy and grateful now that you have $500 a month coming in? It's helping with my, it's, uh, let's actually, you can make this the grandest, greatest version you can, and it will evolve. And I could even evolve what I'm putting down now. So let's go, it's making my car payment. Making my car payment. It's expanding my ISA pantry. Uh, it's giving me greater peace by reducing the stress of debt. My relationship with my spouse or whoever, my kids, my relationships, are improving. Okay, so I'm so happy and grateful now that there's $500 or more coming in in cycles in my exogenics business every month. It's making my car payment. That's so awesome. 
Like you want to throw words in here because it's about state. What we're getting at here is a state of being. You don't get what you want, you get what you are. So we're creating and identifying this new concept of ourselves, which institutes incredible powers that God has interwoven into the fabric of our lives and the universe. So that power is keeping you alive right now that we're now gonna facilitate in our lives in a very specific way. If you don't know who you are and where you're headed, then you're just gonna be tossed all over the place. We're getting very refined on who I'm, the concept and identity of ourselves are. So then that institutes this incredible, you know, God-given power. It's the same power that's blinking your eyes right now and breathing you. Like, it's keeping you alive. That's pretty important, right? So, pretty powerful as well. So, I'm so happy and grateful now that, you know, I have over $500 a month coming in in cycles. It's so exciting. I'm so, like, I'm so excited. It's making my car payment. It's so awesome. It's expanding my ISA pantry. I'm getting better and better health because of that. I'm expanding my product line with Isagenix. And it's improving my mental clarity even more. And, and, and the peace that I have with my relationships where we used to argue about debt and different things because we didn't have enough money at the, at the end of the month. Now we have enough money at the end of the month because this is an extra $500. And this is so great how I'm able to now interact with my kids and I'm noticing the difference. They're noticing the difference. Do you see how I'm creating an environment and scenarios? And I could go on. I, I would encourage you to fill up a notepad of that creative writing in a positive way of what's happening for you with that $500 a month. I filled, I filled up notepads when I was being mentored to do this. Like I literally, the, the legal binding or the legal yellow notepads, I filled up pages of coming up with all the awesome things. And sometimes you have to think about the negative things that you don't like and then just put the opposite, the exact opposite of what those negative things that you don't want in your life are. We're not focusing on putting down negative things here. We're talking about putting things down in a positive way. We're really creating that dream life scenario with this extra $500 that's coming in. Now, this extra $500, I'm so grateful. Look, you don't get something for nothing. In order to get, in order to receive, we must first give. So in order to receive, we must first give. We don't get something for nothing. This is not charity. This is not a handout. This is helping. You're going to be improving and disciplining yourself in your actions and then the consequences that come from those disciplined actions. So again, there's some, we're instituting some powers in your behalf that are going to come back and serve you. All right. So the value what are we adding? What are we giving in trade for this $500 a month that's coming in now, passively and residually? The value we're going to add here, the way we need to frame this up is the value we're going to add for customers and the value that we're going to add for business partners. Now, we're going to review this every morning. This is the compelling vision that fundamentally we have to review every morning. If you haven't listened to that 30 minutes for the next 30 years of your life by Tony Robbins, I encourage you to do it and listen to it over and over at least 25 times. So we, we have to add some value and, and we're creating the concept of ourselves and, and how we're showing up in the world and, and, and the contributions that we're making. So let's make some awesome contributions. The sky is the limit. So what is the value that I see myself adding to the customers because uh, I'm sharing Isogenics products with them? So. Uh, there and you guys could be typing these in in the chat box if you want as well and Jojo you could be reading some of them so uh, they have more so I'm so happy and grateful now that I have customers who have way more energy you got to use these power words like exciting and awesome and way more and uh, phenomenal right phenomenal um you want to keep putting these in front of each of these bullet points so it's so awesome that i have greater peace because we've reduced the debt and now we have enough money to get through the month it's so awesome that my relationships are improving with my kids right so we want to throw those in so it's so exciting that i have customers now that have way more energy mental whoops mental clarity they are excited about life they are 
they are making isogenics a lifestyle. They love it. And they're expanding their isopantry. This is creative Cree writing. Just let it flow. When you get tapped into it in a quiet place, it just keeps going. Like you go into momentum with it. Uh, uh, Esther Hicks says, do it for 15 seconds, really focus. And then all of a sudden the next thought comes and the next thought comes. So uh, they are sharing. Wouldn't you want customers that are sharing what? With people who are negative and saying no? You get to decide right here, right? What's the value you're adding? And this is your business. This is your customer base. They are sharing successfully. With who? With family members that support them and say yes. And they're having amazing results, right? So as I have a notepad, I could just be writing this out. As they're having amazing results and they're making it a lifestyle, these guys are in a frenzy state of excitement that's maintainable through this lifestyle. And they're sharing it with their coworkers, people at church and that are saying yes. Strangers that they're meeting are showing up in their lives now. They're saying yes and they're getting excited. This is expanding. My customer base is so powerful and strong. They're even getting their products paid for. Do you see what I'm doing here? I'm creating a concept. You already have a concept of yourself that was placed on you like the baby elephant. And you framed up your life based on what you've accepted like the baby elephant did. Erroneous, non-serving, negative things. We're gonna change that concept. Remember, those were all just thoughts and images that you agreed to. They're not who you are. You just made a decision to agree to those things. We could redefine, we could re reevaluate based on what we know now and, and, and these concepts and how they impact our lives and the results we're getting. So make it the greatest, grandest version. Fill out a notepad. And what I did with that notepad when I was reviewing it every morning, I just went through and read the notepad. And then I, because I was in a flow, new things would come up and I would throw them in to where I could fit it. I would write something that came to my mind that wasn't on the notepad already. And I just read them every day. Yeah, it took me time, but I was playing at 100% and I believed, and, and I just would read those. As I got more and more familiar with them, and I could almost do it verbatim by just reading a couple words, I could finish the sentence. Then I would transfer those bullet points over to a three by five card and carry that around with me. And it started to become the concept of who I was. It started to become my identity. And so like the elephant, if it changes its identity of who it is, what's it gonna do to that little rope that's you know, keeping it bound? Just pull it right out of the ground. And this is a very powerful fundamental that we're doing here. So now, what we're doing is we're gonna seamlessly and flawlessly go from here to this, and then we're gonna go from customers to business partners. Now we're gonna start framing up the leverage and the people who are helping you to create leverage in your life while simultaneously they're doing it in their own lives. So what could we put down about business partners? They are, I'm so happy and you know, so these customers, they're getting their products paid for. And these customers that are coming in, I don't even know who they are. I have such amazing business partners. So I have amazing, I have amazing, that's another word we can put down as a buzzword, amazing, right? Did I put that down? I don't know, did I put it over there? I can't see it, let's just see. Nope, I didn't put amazing. So do you see how these words come as you get into the flow? That one just came to me. I have amazing business partners. And you gotta allow yourself to do this. That rope that's been put around your neck as a baby elephant, is gonna to try to prevent you from really dreaming big. I'm giving you permission to dream your highest, grandest version that you can of yourself. And this is not optional. This is a must, this is non-negotiable. You have to do it because I'm telling you, you have to do it. If you need that kind of permission, I'm telling you, you have to do it, then, then do that. Um, I have amazing business partners that are so passionate and focused 
isogenics has become their identity. They love it. They are incredible leaders. In my organ, in my isogenics organization, like we're, we're, and, and, and this is why I'm making over $500 a month in cycles and growing. And they're making money. In fact, I've got somebody on one of my legs, one of my organizations, my right team that's making more money than I am. Whoa, that's pretty awesome. If you know our compensation plan, that's pretty awesome that I have somebody that's making more money in one of my organizations than I am. And then this is one that I literally said, and then I drew that out. I made a little graph like this, and I put, that's me right there in my organization, and my teams are growing, and I put millionaire right down over here on my right team. Guess what that incredible power that goes to work and helps us as we get into action and as we start ex exercising the faith. This is perfect faith right here and what I'm doing. I'm becoming grateful for something that I've not yet received. I've been coming grateful in my mind on a spiritual level for something I haven't yet received in the physical world. That's an absolute 100% perfect prayer of faith. And so what happened? Is it a coincidence that a millionaire actually showed up on my right leg? Started making more money than me? No, it's not a coincidence, but that brought excess BV into that right leg. And if you guys know the comp plan, that is awesome. That's amazing, that's a phenomenon. I'm so grateful. What we wanna to get to as a state, through all of this is we're, we're going after that state. And the state that we want is one of gratitude, this is what we want, where we become grateful for something we've not yet received in the physical world. Now look, what we're doing here is an action. And whenever we have an action, there's always an opposite and equal reaction, cause and effect. You getting up in the morning, you going into your quiet place, your closet, wherever that is, and you mentally doing this. It's an action that you're taking. And, and, and the bigger part of it is on a spiritual level, which is real. It's more real than anything else. And so there's going to be some things that happen that you're instituting, that you're facilitating in your life that go above and beyond your senses, your, your physical awareness. And so what, but what causes that to happen is the clarity and the way that we want to, life by design. You don't want to just give the designs to the contractor and let him have at it because he might not make the house that you want. So let's create it and blueprint it specifically with the things that we want. And we get into this state of gratitude. How do we do that? You're now, this is called also, this state is also called the inception phase. In the inception phase, when you conceive of something, it lights you up. You have 100% faith in the inception phase. Your energy's high, your action's high. When you get in that inception phase about a concept for yourself and you're introduced to it, it doesn't care what your spouse says. It doesn't care what your parents say. It doesn't care what your teacher said in third grade. It doesn't matter what your coworkers say. You're in the inception phase, and they cannot phase you when you're there. And you can take yourself there every morning. This is the compelling vision and image and reasons that will cause you to do things that other people wouldn't normally do. Why? Because you're in the inception phase. You've fallen in love with. It's very exciting. And this is the gift that you're going to receive because you're doing these actions. And they will put you into actions in the physical world that other people wouldn't do when the going gets tough. So how do we get into that state of gratitude with this? We frame it all up. We get very clear on what these details are. And then every morning, we review it. And when we're reviewing it, we, we have a certain goal. We want to experience it. We want to live it. We want to feel it. And we want to connect with it. That takes discipline. That's an action. It takes discipline to do that, but that discipline will institute an incredible power. It's, it's also labeled as a law of attraction, law of vibration, a lot of different labels for it. So, 
this is what we're doing here. We're creating that new identity for ourselves. Now we go from, we could go forever. I mean, we can go for a long time. You could fill up notepads about what your business partners look like and how they're quitting their jobs. They're now less stressed. They have more income coming in. Their relationships are better. Uh, they're focused. They're doing meetings on their own without you. They're enrolling people without me. Like people are showing up in my organization because of my incredible leaders that are on my team. And they're having more abundance show up in their lives. We can go on for quite a while with that, right? Now, because of those business partners and what's happening, and now it's self-perpetuating, my business, that five, and you want to keep bringing the $500 a month into it, just like you do the power words. So I'm so grateful for these leaders. It's amazing and exciting. This is why I'm cycling over 500 times, uh, uh, or five, uh, cycling and receiving over $500 a month. And it's growing and expanding, and it's taking me to my freedom day. It's, so we come down to here. It's taking me to my freedom day. And the freedom day, you guys, this is the compelling vision and the gift that is pulling you to do all of these things, to take the, and, and have the discipline and create these rituals that you're going to do every morning. Tony Robbins says rituals are the things you do every day subconsciously. They're your habits. They're your, they're your things that you must do every day. Those are your rituals. So you're going to take the, this is going to be what drives the $500 a month is a stepping stone of getting to the freedom day. And the freedom day is the compelling vision. And when you create this compelling vision in the right way and you connect with it every day, it's a must have. It doesn't really take discipline to do the right actions, which we're going to frame up right here in step three. We're gonna frame up the actions, the efficient actions that have to, by law, infallibly move you to the goal. But we wanna make sure that we're doing first things first, staying in inception phase. So it's, it's the difference between pushing for your goal and your goal pulling you towards it. When successful people are pulled by their vision, they're pulled by their dream because they framed it up in images and ideas and concepts that are very clear in their mind and they become real in their mind. And now the vision is pulling them to do incredible things every day. So you see how we frame that up? So what is your freedom day? Your freedom day is when you get to have, do, and be anything that you want. You have the unrestricted free use of time, money, and resources. And it's been very interesting to see what the freedom day is for people. And it reminded me of what my freedom day was back when I was mechanicing. It was taking my wife to dinner and a movie, providing new clothes for my kids, uh, being able to take some vacations without having to stay at my parents' house, right? Because we couldn't afford a hotel and being able to have the gas money to get there. And the ultimate part of that Freedom Day was that I was able to quit my job uh, as a mechanic and do isogenics full time. Like I replaced that income. So really we were talking probably about, oh, somewhere around three to $5,000 a month. That was my big freedom day back then. And I wrote all the compelling things. We're taking vacations now, vacations, uh, hotels. We never stayed in hotels, you guys. Are you kidding me? We couldn't afford to stay in a hotel. We could barely muster the gas to get there. So um, vacations, hotels, vehicles, um, the house that we wanted to live in, and really describing that house with the granite countertops and the, and the big refrigerator you know, with the double doors on it and the tile and the wood flooring and my kids have their own bedroom and I have my own office, right? And what does the backyard look like with the swimming pool in it? So it's the dream house. These are the things, these were the compelling visions that were pulling me. And they were, I could see how they would be a reality because I had framed up, you know, the, the certainty that I had in the vehicle of isogenics helping me to accomplish these things, which is, we're, we're framing that up right here, right? The $500 a month. But now we're taking that $500 a month in cycles and expanding that to a bigger, grander version of what our life is going to be. And the fact that this is all happening, that I'm reviewing every morning, it's happening because I'm looking at this as I'm so happy and grateful now that I have incredible business partners. I have a seven-figure income or a millionaire, an ISA millionaire in my downline. This has already happened, not going to happen. I'm being what Will Smith calls delusional, 
what Jim Carrey did when he was bussing tables and he saw himself receiving a check from the producer of the movie for a million dollars. He was being delusional. He was seeing it as an already accomplished fact. It's called the law or the principle of assuming. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go seamlessly right from my business partners and the $500 a month that it's so exciting because I'm moving closer and closer to my freedom day, which is $5,000 a month coming in residually every month in cycles. And because of that, we're taking vacations. We're staying at the hotel. We stayed at the Marriott hotel it was so awesome for my kids to be able to go swimming while we were at the hotel and we paid for it cash because of the income that's coming in. I can see it, it's coming, it's on its way. There's a sense of certainty and expectation about my Freedom Day. That's what I'm doing, I'm connecting to my dream and seeing the reality of it. Let's use red. The 500 a month is the stepping stone that I've reached and now I'm moving closer and closer to the certainty and reality of my freedom day. And now I start stepping into what is it like now that I have my freedom day. All right, so we're framing all that up. This is non-negotiable. The more excellence and time and re refining that you put into this and the excellence that you review it every morning, experiencing, this takes discipline. All of this is an action. Everything that you put into this, you do this as if everything depended on it. That's the level of excellence. The more you're instituting these incredible powers that we know very little about and how they work, but they start bringing these people into your lives. Like if I put in here that I have customers that are drinking their shakes with their isogenics cup at work and people are asking them, what are they doing? And they're signing up people because they're drinking out of their shake at work, their shaker cup that says isogenics. And people are asking them, what are, they, what are you drinking? And they share it with them. And that person now has made isogenics their lifestyle. I kid you not, these are the types of things that happen. You're gonna get a phone call from one of your customers saying, guess what happened today? I was drinking my shake at work like I always do. And a coworker came up to me and asked me what I was drinking. We got into a conversation and now they're getting started on isogenics. Is that crazy? You know, you're gonna have people saying that to you in your reality. It's what happens. So it's these divine doors and these divine connections that start happening because you're doing your part. All right, so now the last step we wanna do here is we wanna bring in our leadership. So we put in the money, the money has to be there. You have to come up with the specific amount of money. And when you reach the 500 a month, if you're already there in cycles, then make it a thousand, a $500 a week. Make it $500 a week if you're already at the 500 a month. If you're already at 500 a week, then make it a thousand dollars a week and still use the same process and, and the same process of getting to your freedom day. Now, so we have the money there. We have the personal vision for yourself, your compelling vision that's pulling you because it's so exciting. And if you don't do these things here, which we're getting, if you don't do these things, it's not only what can I have, it's what am I gonna lose because I don't do these fundamentals. I don't do these fundamental non-negotiable actions. What am I gonna lose as a result? So you can look at it both ways. If I don't do this, I'm gonna lose this. If I do this, I'm going to get this. And this is an incredible gift for me and my family. Make sure you're putting your family and your kids and the lifestyle that you get to live because you're living your dream life and how that's impacting your kids and influencing them and providing the activities and the events. And you get to go to those activities because you're doing isogenics full time. You're sitting in the stands and you're focused on your kid while they're doing the activity and they look up at you in the stands and they're smiling and beaming because you're there, right? That compelling vision. So when you get there, it's going to pull you to do these things that you must do to reach the goal, the efficient actions. And it's more like a joy and you get to do them because it's pulling you towards that compelling vision. Now, there, so the personal parts in there, the customers, the business partners, and this is really what the scriptures and all great texts are really trying to get across to us, serve other people. You have to serve, you have to give in order to receive. And it doesn't care what your background is. 
you, you may not have enough money to get through the month, but you are adding value on a spiritual level, the quantum level. You are adding value to people. You're giving something to people, even though you're as broke as a church mouse. You can't even, we did one of these the other day, right? Uh, Willie was somebody that can't even leave the home because they don't have enough money to leave their house. Even though that's where she's coming from, she can start to add value in people's lives by doing this and truly connecting and exercising that faith by feeling it, by getting to a state of gratitude. That is giving. And it's giving to people that are nameless and faceless, but you see that it's giving to people. You are adding value and you are able to give and you will start receiving because that's the opposite and equal reaction is those people start to show up in your lives in the most miraculous ways. The mountains start to move. All right. So now what we want to do, because we must, is, is start to develop you as a leader. And we want to get to the level three and level four leadership. You have to get there. And then you lead the way. And you're directing people that are coming into your organization. Anybody that comes into your organization, I don't care what skills, what background they have, they might already be making a six-figure income. Those people are like infants to your business. An infant is 100%, 100%, uh, uh, what's the word? 100% dependent. Dependent, thank you, on the parent to keep it alive. There is nothing the baby can do for itself when it's an infant to keep itself alive. It's 100% dependent on the parent. Your customers and future associates are 100% dependent on you educating and inspiring them to get to level two, level three, and level four. I don't care what their background is, they're dependent on you to do that. The only way you can get them to the level two, level three, and level four is by getting there yourself. The fastest way to get from point A to B is for you to create the concept for yourself on the spiritual level. And that's why it says leadership right here. You're creating the personal vision for yourself in one, two, three, four areas. This is the fifth level, the fifth area, leadership. So you come back from that and you could be weaving this all the way through your entire vision. I am such an incredible leader that articulates and explains the problems and the solutions and people are getting it, they're understanding it, they're internalizing it, they're having their ahas because I am such an incredible leader. Because I'm able to uh, articulate and inspire people to take the actions that create progress in their lives. I am a high level three and four leader. I am helping people to get into production stage where they are actually making the progressive actions that are creating more abundance, more health, more freedom in their lives. I am a leader. I am a high level three and level four leader. And the more you start to understand what are the characteristics and traits of a level three and level four leader, the more you can write that into your vision. Right now, you would use examples of people that have been role models for you in isogenics, in life. You know, I'm like Tony Robbins. I am moving people. I am developing my customers customers and my, my associates to become these incredible leaders. I am a people development leader. I'm like Lynn Hagedorn. and I'm able to articulate successfully to people so that they're inspired and they self-discover and they start making the changes in their lives and they start advancing their isogenics business. They're creating a broad customer base because of their ability. They're creating other uh, uh, isogenics leaders in their organizations. I'm like Lynn Hagedorn, I'm like Hillary Courtney, I'm like, and you use those role models as best you can to make that who you are. I'm now on the stage, I'm now training, and I've developed leaders who are on the stage in training. I am a high level three and a high level four leader. So you're weaving that into the concept of who you are, your identity. Remember, we're not baby elephants anymore. We're not going to let people decide what we're worth or what they think we can do. 
we're going to start to dream up the highest, grandest version for ourselves and then start to review that every day. And it starts to become your identity. If you put enough excellence into that every day, like I did, when I was mechanicing, I was reviewing this every morning and then as often throughout the day as I could. And what happened when I, after a certain amount of time of doing that, I was putting my mechanics uniform on and I was getting sick to my stomach, physically sick to my stomach because I was putting on an identity that on the mental level, I wasn't anymore. And because that identity was becoming so powerful of who I was, God brought all of the right people into my life as I was doing my income producing activities, certain amount of days a week and certain amount of hours during those days. As I was doing the efficient actions, God brought the right people and it yanked me out of the mechanic environment and plopped me full time into isogenics. I replaced my income and that made my stomach sick. I felt nauseous when I was making that move because there was this pull between, wait, you're a mechanic, you have to show up and check into a, a work and a time clock every day to get the money to keep the food on the table. And then there was this other identity that I had accepted where I was getting passive residual income from a team that I was building. And I kept feeding this vision rather than going back to the one that was comfortable and that was placed on me. I started stepping into and continuing that transformation by continuing to review this every morning. I didn't stop. It was a fundamental action that was now a part of my rituals every day. And which one won? Well, you can see which one won. I'm still doing isogenics full time. I don't mechanic anymore. They fix my cars now. So this is very important. This is a non-negotiable activity. The activity of framing it up with excellence in detail in these different areas and then reviewing it every morning. So you're gonna review it every morning down here with the non-negotiables. Now, what's gonna happen, this is every morning, that's not one of your habits yet. And you're going, your goal when you review it is to get into this state of gratitude. And the only way you can get into the state of gratitude is if you embrace and receive these things in that moment in that moment you're living it you're feeling it you're experiencing it you're getting really lit up by it you're in the inception phase so uh, now we've created an event and this piece is the piece that we were missing that really can allows us to follow up with everybody before we got i got paralyzed as a leader i couldn't follow up because i didn't know if they didn't create their list and start doing the income producing activities i didn't have any control beyond there I was only at a low level fourth leader. I couldn't follow up and help them to move forward effectively because I was missing something and I didn't know what I was missing. Is it an accident that Malcolm was inspired to go look on his bookshelf and for a John Maxwell book and then come across leadership and self-deception? Was that a coincidence that he went to look for John Maxwell and totally picked up a different book? No, it was no coincidence that he called me and said, hey, we need to start talking about this book. Because why? Because I had a vision of who I was as a leader. And it wasn't too long ago that I started writing that leader into my vision in a certain way. And because I reviewed it every morning, it started becoming an identity. That power that's keeping us alive right now by beating our heart and blinking our eyes is the same power that moved into action and created the divine connection. The answer came because I was doing my part. I was instituting every morning perfect faith as a certain leader. And there was something that I was missing. Well, God in the universe, the way he sprained it up, knew exactly what that was. And because I was now instituting the right amount of faith with the specific amount of detail, the answer came. I could have never in a billion years as a human told you that that's how it would have shown up for me to be a better leader and to be able to start following up with people to move them forward when they're not doing the efficient actions, when they're self-betraying. I didn't even know that word a couple months ago. I didn't even know this justification self-betrayal piece on the level I know it now. It's because of that book. And I'm telling you, the answers and the solutions and the people that you need to fulfill this and manifest it, they will show up if you do this fundamental thing every morning. But now you have a choice. 
and you're going to be consciously aware of whether or not, because we have it right here, it's part of the review and the follow-up. You're going to do this every morning. And we're going to check in with you on the follow-ups when, you know, as we're working with our team, as we follow up, we get to review everything that's right here on this. And either they have not, they haven't framed up a compelling vision, and I'm making my associates and my team make the hair on my arms stand up when they read me seamlessly and flawlessly their vision. And if they don't make the hair on my arms stand up, and if they're not tearing up, they have not created a compelling, convicting vision that's gonna pull them. And JoJo, has that scenario happened where we're crying and hair is standing up on people's bodies and- Multiple yes. times. So if they're not reviewing it on a daily basis, guess what's happening to their efficient actions, their income producing activities? They're not doing them. So if, if, if they say, well, look, I didn't do my uh, compelling, or I didn't do my income producing activities today, we can say, we don't have to say now, well, all right, let's go back to the drawing board. You know, who's your list? Who are you gonna call and, and set up a welcome call with us? Who are you gonna set up? We don't do that anymore. We go and identify where the real problem is and we can identify now, oh, have you been doing your compelling vision? Because you do have a very strong vision. It makes you cry. It makes the hair on my arm stand up. Have you been reviewing it every morning? Oh, you know what? I stopped doing that about a week and a half ago. And they didn't realize that they were self-betraying themselves and justifying not doing that every morning. Because it's easy to do and it's easy not to do. And so we can identify that. And as leaders, we can say, all right, let's go back to your compelling vision and start doing that every morning. That takes discipline. Now we're talking about a discipline. We're not talking about personal development at that point. It's discipline, like me squeegeeing the shower every morning for over 10 years at my house. I don't want to squeegee my shower and there's no compelling vision behind it that lights me up and it's a gift, but it's what's going to happen if I don't do it. And, and so every morning it takes discipline for me to squeegee the shower and I've missed it less than how many times I could count on my hands and feet in 10 years. I've squeegeed that shower more. I mean, I've not, not squeegeed, I've not squeegeed it less times than there are digits on my hands and feet in 10 years. That's an incredible amount of discipline to do something I don't want to do every morning, but there are some reasons why I do do it, but it still takes discipline. Those reasons are not like, yay, I got to squeegee the shower. I'm excited about it. It lights me up. I can't wait to take the shower so I can squeegee it. It takes sheer discipline to squeegee the shower every morning. And sometimes it takes sheer discipline to do that efficient action. And this is one of them. All right. So now we've got all this framed up. You're doing your compelling vision every morning. Now let's talk about the income producing activities. Income producing activities are connecting with people. This is not getting ready to get ready. Connecting with people. Who is it that I'm going to be connecting with? Well, we could write that over here. It's going to be connecting and following up with. So connecting and follow up with so you have prospects, you always wanna be feeding that, the, the funnel, right? And having new people as you're building your organization to get to that $500 a month and beyond. So uh, prospects, these are all part of the income producing activities. Prospects, meeting new people, sharing the message, and then uh, your customers and your associates that are your business partners. Those are your business partners. So the following up um, is going to be moving each one of them forward. So you're going to educate. This is what you're, how you're going to be following up. You're going to educate and inspire to take further action. You're going to do that with your prospects, your customers, and your associates. Prospects, you're going to get them to take the action to start to, to enroll and start taking these products and putting them in their body. As they become customers, you're going to support them. You're going to encourage them. You're going to inspire them. And you're going to also expand the product line from the Forever Pack to Ionics or maybe doing two shakes a day 
right? You're going you're gonna to be working with and educating your customers and bringing them into the community, introducing them to the Facebook groups, getting them on the phone through welcome calls, and introducing them to your upline and the Isogenics community. That is a very essential and important fundamental in introducing them to the community, not just you, and then letting them try to analyze and figure things out on their own. Introduce them to this broader, more expansive isogenics community, right? With, uh, with uh, customers, then you can also evolve them into um, the opportunity and showing them how they can get their products paid for. Does that interest you? And those that say yes, they're now becoming your associates and business partners. And as your organization's growing, you're having customers and associates and business partners come in through other people besides you. So with associates, we're gonna to continue to inspire them to aspire higher, aspire higher. And that would be a level three and level four leader action. So you've got to start to incorporate the identity and the skills of a level three and level four. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. But these are the income producing activities, not setting up your calendar and coming up with the most awesome looking schedule planner with all of these columns and, and sorting mechanisms that you built. That is not an income producing activity. You can make those, but they're not a part of your daily operations and hours of operation. So it's connecting with people on this level and in educating and inspiring them to take further action, progress. Now, the DOO, that's your days of operation. How many days, Monday through Friday, and what are you gonna do Saturday through Sunday? How many hours on each of those days? Once we identify and we clearly know what these uh, uh, income producing activities are in connecting with people, because that's, if products aren't moving, people aren't getting paid, right? So we need to connect with people and create income producing activities where they are getting on the products, which causes the products to move, which then creates this up here, right? You don't get something for nothing. You're adding value to people. You're inspiring them to take action. Products are moving and that's creating your $500 a month. Now we're expanding that because of the way we've set this up with what's going on with these customers and business partners in your leadership. So as we begin to understand and know what a real income producing activity is, and we don't start to justify ourselves from not taking these income producing activities because we've identified what they are. I have people write them out. What are the hours? What are the days you're going to work? And what are the hours you're going to work on those days with those income producing activities? Once we have all that dialed in, those are called efficient actions. Efficient actions must move you towards the goal. It's infallible. There is no way for you to not reach your goal because an efficient action is an action that has to move you towards your goal. And depending on the amount of hours and days you work, the faster you're gonna get there. So I wanna use a scenario that came up in doing these and masterminding to give you an aha. So. I'm gonna use Wendy as an example. Wendy just became a world champion bodybuilder. And many of you have seen that on Facebook. She's on the team and she's in the group. So there's a threshold or principle to momentum. There's a threshold principle. So let's just say that Wendy, prior to becoming the world champion bodybuilder that she just became, was doing 30 minutes of cardio a week all right 30 minutes of cardio a week and and she says and she's now has this compelling vision that is now she's articulating it to her trainer and she says look i want to be i'll do whatever you tell me to do you know obviously i'm not doing enough and you know what i need to do to become a world champion bodybuilder i want to take first place and she says okay wendy you need to do six hours of cardio a week She's doing 30 and she's doing it every day and she's doing it with excellence. Like she does that 30 minutes like nobody. But the trainer says, you have to do six hours on top of, so let's use this. We have this, everybody has the same 24 hours a day. So here's our 24 hours. 
and it's cut up into different slices. Nobody's any different. And trust me, you're not unique in your situations. You, you might justify yourself that nobody has the same problems and less time than you do, but we all have the same 24 hours. It's our priorities. And if you create a, com a compelling vision, you will make your income producing a priority. Your income producing activities will become a priority for you. So Wendy has made become number one in the world champion bodybuilder a priority. So she was giving so many hours a week or a day on her cardio. She was also giving so many hours a day on meal prepping and her nutrition and understanding it. She was also giving so much on resistance time or uh, resistance training, working with the weights. Those are all part of her becoming a world champion bodybuilder. Now, she was already giving a certain amount of time to the cardio, but the trainer said, not enough. You need to be doing six hours of cardio. So because it's a priority to Wendy, she says, no problem. I'm just gonna cut out some things in my life and it's gonna become a priority. And it became a high priority because some of the things she cut out were things that she enjoyed doing or things that she felt like she had to do. But this is a bigger priority. Talked to the family, said, this is what I'm gonna do. And so you're just gonna have to like, you know, deal with it. This is my decision. I'm in inception phase and I'm going for this. This is a must in my life, all right? That's what your compelling vision can do for you and it can do it for you on a daily basis. So she start, that's the threshold right there. There's the threshold. So she has to raise her standards. You don't get what you want, you get what you are. She started doing it, she raised her standards. So if you're, let's go to a different page here. Let's just say that this is different levels of living life. And where you're experiencing your life is right here. But you want to experience this life up here. Well, there's a, there's, a, there's a disconnect. You want this life up here. This is the vision. And this is where you are now, life now. And there's a lot of things you don't like about that and you want to eliminate them. And you want more of this life and the things that are in that type of life. Well, there's a disconnect. Your standards are giving you a result, cause and effect. The actions that you're taking are producing this kind of life. So you're gonna to have to raise your standards to meet the vision. And some of you saw the aha that Anna shared in the Zoom. She said, I realized that my standards were not equal to my vision. I had to raise the standards. So what Wendy's doing here is she realizes, oh, my standards of 30 minutes of cardio a week isn't enough. I've gotta raise it to six. And she decided, yeah, I'm doing it. It wasn't even a decision. Her vision pulled her to do it. You guys see that? It didn't take discipline. She just said, done, I'm doing the cardio. And it took willpower and discipline to do it. Wendy told me, oh my gosh, it scared me when she said that. Six hours of cardio? But it wasn't a decision she had to make. She already made the decision with her compelling vision. And she realized that the income producing activity was six hours of cardio. A lot of people are coming into isogenics. They have this vision of where they want their life to be but they're only doing 30 minutes of cardio. When we did this the other day with somebody, they had already come up with their hours of operation for their ISA business. They had already come up with their standards. And, and here was the aha for them. We already have a standard of how to create the Freedom Day. We already have the standard set for us in hours per week. Jim Rohn gave that for us in building your network marketing business. I highly recommend that audio, building your network marketing business. He said, look, we all have full-time jobs. We all have these things that we have to divide up our day with. But if you want to replace your full-time income at work with your part-time business, you have to put in so many hours a week. Does anybody know what those hours a week are? I went back and listened to it because I was erroneously telling people what they were. It's 12 to 15 hours a week. He says, if you do that consistently, every week, every week, every week, you, and you're doing the efficient actions, you're not self-betraying, 
We know what those actions are and we're doing them during those 12 to 15 hours a week. You must move towards your goal. Wallace Waddles calls this the science of getting rich. It's like a lab. You know the, the factor. You know what needs to be done. We're gonna do this action and we're gonna see in a laboratory what comes of those actions. Well, we already know what comes from doing efficient income producing actions 12 to 15 hours a week in your isogenics business. We know what the result is gonna be every time, every time, every time. It's not left to chance. It's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when, because that many hours every week with the right efficient actions must move you towards your goal. It's a science that's immutable and infallible. And as long as we put forth the discipline, uh, Kevin and Pam Barnum, they said, we're gonna do two hours every night. She was an attorney, he was a police officer. Very responsible jobs, lots of stresses. He was over the canine unit. They said, we're gonna do two hours every night. Well, two hours, five nights a week, that's only 10 hours. They didn't reach the threshold. But guess what? There was two of them doing it. So that 10 hours was actually 20 hours. Two hours a night, five nights a week, times two, 20 hours a week they were doing. They met the threshold. I went back and calculated. I was recalling what I was doing a week. And on average, I was 15 to 20 hours a week that I was doing while I was still mechanicing. And I was doing income producing activities. What were my activities? Talking to prospects, educating them and inspiring them to get on the products. Nobody was off limits. People at church, people at work, strangers that I was running into. I would do expos and set up a booth. There was like expos I could do for $25. They would let me set up a booth. I was connecting with prospects. Those prospects I was following up with and inviting myself to come into their home and do a little meeting, just a small little meeting for them and their family and friends. And so I was doing income producing activities every week, you know, 20 hours a week. In four and a half months, because I improved my skill level and my ability to inspire people, I improved that. While I was doing it every week, I didn't self-betray. Why? Because my vision was pulling me. And I knew that if I did these income producing activities, I was going to reach the goal. I already saw that in Isogenics, the compelling evidence. So I didn't self-betray. In four and a half months, I replaced my income because of the leverage, the customer base, and the casual sharing of my customers was doing more than I could do by myself as a mechanic. I replaced my income. And all the right people were showing up because I instituted that divine principle. Did you guys see what's happening? I was doing the, the non-negotiable fundamentals, my compelling vision, income producing activities, and the discipline. I must reach my goal. Now it just takes the discipline. But because my compelling vision was so strong, most of the time I didn't need discipline. But there were times when I needed discipline, just like I still do with squeegeeing the shower every morning. And I could consciously identify now as a leader and a mentor what was pulling me. Most people may not be where I was. And so they're going to need to help. They're going to need to have help identifying where they're betraying. So as you set up your days of the week that you're going to work and how many hours, here's the threshold. We know it's 12 to 15 hours. This person we were doing it with was under these hours. And they realized like Anna, oh, there's a disconnect. My standards are not at the level of what my vision is. Let me go back and recalculate the hours that I could put into my business. Wow, you guys. What is happening for people? Because they're understanding and seeing things in a certain and scientific way. We're changing the way people see things. So now they're doing things in accordance to the way they see them and serve them. Nobody wants to set the goal and then self-sabotage. But that's what happens. Now that was being done because of ignorance. We were able to dispel that ignorance that was holding somebody back right here on this page. It's all right here. And when they see that, they have a level of certainty of the reality of their dream and they're gonna up their standards on the hours of operation they're gonna do with their business and what those operations are during those hours of operation. You guys, it's a done deal. The only thing that's gonna hold somebody back is if those standards that are gonna be demanded of them are 
our, uh, their compelling vision isn't big enough. They're like, no, I don't want to do that. Like uh, Wendy could have said to her trainer, yeah, I'll do six hours a week. And then she didn't do it because there's no way she doesn't want to do six hours of cardio. That dream, pff, you know what? I, I, I don't want it that bad. No, she wanted that. So what, even with somebody like that, that doesn't want the compelling vision, all we need to do is go back and push their buttons on finding what their compelling vision is. They didn't connect with the thing that's going to pull them to do the income producing activities. And trust me, everybody has a button that we can push. Everybody has it. How do I know that? Because it's in you. It's innately in you. It's divine. It's part of your birthright. Everybody wants to progress. It's just a matter of finding out and structuring it strategically and accurately so that we frame all that up. Everybody wants to progress. There isn't anybody that doesn't. It's just finding those buttons to push and then connecting all the pieces. So now a couple other pieces here. So we have the compelling vision. We're reviewing it every morning. We're now doing our income producing activities. At night, keep a journal. If you didn't take the action that you said you were gonna take and you self betrayed, I want you to be conscious of that because you did that probably on a subconscious level. Oh, the kids needed to eat or, you know, I had to do this today. And so that made me have to do this, which means it cut into my business of operation my days of operation, my hours of operation with my isogenics business. And we start justifying. And you don't even realize you're doing it. It's kind of happening subconsciously. You kind of know it, but it wasn't that big of a deal because you were able to justify yourself subconsciously. Those are patterns and habits that we have. I want you to get a journal and journal every night. You're going to have to think. You're going to have to reason. You're going to have to do a 2% or activity. Only 2% people in the world would do this. They're going to critically think, okay, I didn't take that action today. What was the betray? What was the justifications I used? And you start listing those out. Now you're naming it to taming it. It's on a conscious level now. And the next time it comes up during that event, you're going to notice it before you actually self betray. Somebody caught themselves and they texted us last night that they caught themselves in the self betrayal. And they actually went back and got back into action and efficient action where they had actually betrayed and didn't take the action. And then they realized, and it was eating at them, that that was keeping them from their bigger goal. These little justifications keep us from our dream and our, and, and our real reason for living, progressing. But it's the little things that rob us of the big things, but we don't know it. Nobody wants to not reach their goal. And they're recognizing it now. This was a big piece. Thank you, Malcolm, for being that catalyst to present that book that finished the piece of the puzzle for this right here. All right, so now we're doing the income producing activities. We're recognizing the self betrayal. We're disciplining ourselves around them. Now, you've got to move forward as a level three and level four leader. Production, this would be platinum here, you guys. Of course, it's gonna be your compelling vision, three to $5,000 a week. But as you move up in your skill level as a leader, remember, you're doing it mentally first. But as you're doing the actions and you're starting to read the books and watch the videos and internalize the principles of how a third and fourth level leader view things, what is their perspective? You're getting that because you're doing the actions. You're listening to the, you're, going, you're getting in the trainings, you're watching the videos, you're reading the books. Now you can start to write a more effective leader into your vision here because you're doing that. So right now, because of this, you could say, I'm an awesome third and fourth level leader because I show up, I do the work, I get the information, I'm doing the trainings, I'm disciplining myself around what I'm learning. Write that in your vision up here as a leader. Somebody's going to offer you a book or something you're going to see that you weren't seeing before because it's part of your identity now. When you buy a certain clothes item, you start to see it everywhere. You buy a certain car, you start to see it everywhere because it's part of your identity. You're gonna see things that you weren't seeing before that will help you to develop becoming that leader. I would say as a fourth level leader, third level leader, production, getting people into production mode, that's the leverage that will create this freedom. You're inspiring people to get into action. Don Fela's book. So in your call to action, Call to action. 
you're going to do your one, your compelling vision, and really get it good and just keep refining it. Don't laminate it and put it on a big vision board. You're going to put that on a notepad where you're scribbling things in and you're refining it, making sentences transition more smoothly, putting in excited, awesome, this is so cool. I can't believe it. It's amazing. Or I can believe it. It's amazing. It's happening. Right? So your compelling vision. You're going to review it. You're starting this immediately, like today. That's one call to action. And then reading it to your support team, your upline, your, your leaders, or to your cat. So uh, two, <clears throat> you're gonna figure out your days of operation and your hours of operation and your income producing activities. You're gonna get those out in black and white. For an example, Anna gave an example I'm gonna do uh, two hours a day. I'm going to connect with 10 people. I'm going to follow up with, uh, I'm going to connect with 10 people on Facebook, new people, 10 new people on Instagram or LinkedIn. And I'm going to follow up with five customers, prospects, and associates, whatever it is, those income producing activities, you get it written out. And on your hours of operation, you guys, your job doesn't let you decide when you want to come in. I'll oh, just come in whenever you want. You know, it's up to you. You're gonna create business hours. They're the same hours every day. Just like your job, treat it like a job. It's the same hours every day, Monday through Friday, Saturday and Sunday, what are you doing? Three, Don Fela and the 45 second presentation that will change your life. Don Fela wrote a book called The 45 Second Presentation That Will Change Your Life. Along with that, and I recommended this to somebody else, and this is, this is a high level four, three and four liter production. You could be making $10,000 a week when you get to these high level, when your skill level goes up. Tony Robbins, 30 minutes for the next 30 years of your life. It's a YouTube. Listen to that over and over and over. Write down the things that he's saying. I'm still writing down and transcribing things that he's saying. Tony Robbins is a billionaire in people development. He's a billionaire. He's made a billion dollars in helping people to progress. So there's our role model. Wouldn't you want to speak like Tony Robbins to people and inspire them the way Tony Robbins does? Listen to that thing so much that it starts to come out of you like you're Tony Robbins. And Don Fela, that's the power of two, power of three, power of four, and the power of five. That's what got Kathy Coover into network marketing. That's what got Jimmy Smith into network marketing. Use, you're able to not understand this. You're able to inspire uh, customers to become associates and associates to continue to strive and progress and move forward because you're inspiring them on that with our comp plan. And you're doing it like Tony Robbins would do it. You guys, those two tools right there, Don Fela's 45 second presentation, and you start to inspire people and speak it like Tony Robbins would, that's the mark. That's the benchmark. That's the, the highest grandest version. That's the pinnacle. That's the, what you're aiming for. And what if you hit just below that? You're still a millionaire in isogenics. This is not for you to understand it. This is for you to become that. You're going to become that. And, you're, and so that goes to this here. It goes back to this part right here. And you moving up to that high level three, level four leader. You do Tony Robbins and Don Fela and you immerse them and you emerge them together. They converge on each other and that's who you are. Make that your identity up here, you guys. Make that your identity as a leader. Write it into your vision that you are the Tony Robbins and Don Fela of Isogenics and network marketing in your organization. You guys, there's no way we couldn't have a million blenders going off in our Forever Pack movement. It has to happen a million and beyond.
Okay, does it make sense? So looking at this from a bird's eye view, there it all is. This is the complete blueprint to have, do, and be everything you desire. None of this is under trial. None of this is under trial. This is science, you guys. We have all of the pieces now. We've always had the pieces. We were just missing this to help people identify the self-sabotage that we do subconsciously. And as a leader and mentor, to be able to mentor people beyond people not doing the efficient actions. All I have to do is go back to their compelling vision or are they reviewing it every morning? Once they have that framed up, that's the fundamentals. Are they doing that? Now, do they have the right income producing activities, the right amount of hours a day? And look, you guys, this is how I play. This is how I roll. Okay, so the uh, Jim Rohn says 12 to 15 hours. What if I want to accelerate my results? I take it up to 30 hours a week while I'm still being a mechanic, right? What's that going to do to reaching my goal if I increase more actions per week? If I create and I do more efficient actions per week, what's going to happen? I must by law infallibly reach the goal. And anybody can do that. It's not Dave, it's everybody that's doing that. And what's going to increase the ability to do that? Your compelling vision and you taking that on as your new identity. Hey, look, what's gonna produce the results is not just you and your ability. If it was, we might all be lost. God is going to start to move mountains in your life, in your behalf, because you're doing your part. God's not some cosmic bellboy where we get on our knees and we say, God, I want this. Go get it for me. He says, well, present the blueprint before me. And then walk on water with that blueprint. Get to where you experience it, live it, feel it, and connect it. And see yourself walking on water right here. And I'll take care of the rest. I'll take care of the physical world. You'll actually walk on the water. There isn't anything that's left out here, you guys. It's complete. The only factor in this now is you. So, uh, I, I, you know, we covered it all. There's things that I would bring up and working with somebody one-on-one. -on -one. This whole part right here, uh, number five, there's only, what do we have? Five steps. You're going to be doing all of the training and the videos and getting into the ISA community yourself, speed of the leader, speed of the pack. As you evolve and become that identity, you're able to bring people up to these levels. You're able to be able to bring the people that 100% are dependent on you to move them, them up to these levels. So we do it first for ourselves, and then we bring our team along through educating and inspiring to take further action. So there it is. There it is. All right. Any of you leaders want to add anything? Anybody want to share anything? Are there any ahas coming up for anybody? Um, I'm going to unmute and then mute it back to where you guys can unmute yourself. But first, any of the leaders, anybody want to share? Hey, anything? Dave. Yeah. I, um, uh, I think uh, a couple of Zooms ago, I, or maybe one Zoom ago, um, I admitted that uh, I, um, I went to an event, I went to a networking event, and I was having, I was struggling with um, doing my follow-up, okay? I had, I had people who had absolutely positively expressed interest and, and wanted to connect, but I just wasn't in the mood for it, right? And, uh, and, and of course, uh, I recognize that. And, and that, that's the um, first step, is to recognize when you're betraying yourself, okay? And, uh, and I found it's even more powerful if I admit it to somebody else. 
if I admit it to myself, to God, and to uh, other people, uh, then then uh, what happens is I'm I'm um, framing it up as well. This wasn't like me. I I I, uh, I slip back into my old behavior, but the new Malcolm wasn't comfortable with that. So I'm admitting publicly uh, that the new Malcolm doesn't do that anymore, right? And uh, and of course that idea of um, writing it down in a journal is um, is extremely powerful. You know that's the what you're talking about is um, uh, the largest personal development program on earth is um, the 12 Steps of Alcoholics Anonymous. And what you're talking about is step 10. It's, it's uh, uh, basically uh, what step 10 is, is continue to take personal inventory and when we were wrong, promptly admit it. So that, that reminds me, I have the right to be human. So Malcolm was being human. He was, he was doing just what Dave does. I was having trouble doing my follow-up, right? I was having trouble tracking uh, uh, down people who had expressed an interest, a strong interest, and, and working through them, unpacking that strong interest. And you, and you were just talking about that. You were talking about uh, uh, getting back to people uh, about their daily method of operation. Instead, what we used to do is we would jump into action. We'd say, well, let's see your list. Let's start calling people, okay, right? Instead of let's, let's help you unpack your why. Let's help you unpack, because what happens is, yeah, uh, you know, when, when, when we did this uh, a couple of days ago with one of uh, my associates, this is a person who had stopped dreaming. And the reality was, as a mechanic, you had stopped dreaming, okay? Now, you had actually done a course where, where you took a picture of the house you wanted, right? Mm -hmm. So you had started the process of dreaming. And fortunately, uh, there was another program that walked you through that process so that you and Carrie could do that totally ridiculous exercise of going to another neighborhood with your kids who were completely mortified and taking a picture of, of the family in front of your ideal house, right? Yep. And everybody's thinking, how stupid is this, right? And you're sort of thinking that too. But you're thinking, well, I got to do something, right? I can't, I can't no, keep you a mechanic. That's a priority because it, it, it didn't take discipline for me. Carrie was totally supportive. The younger kids were all into it, the, you know, six years <laughs> and younger. The older <laughs> kids were mortified. They're like, right. we can't do that. You know, because they had already had the mental programming. But no, for me, it was like Wendy with uh, the cardio, which right. is, you know, you touched on something. I just want to make a point real quick here, and I'll toss it back to you. There's two important sides to perceive this right here. If Wendy decides, no, I'm going to keep doing the 30 minutes, my instructor doesn't really know what she's talking about. 30 minutes is enough. And she does 30 minutes perfectly at the highest level of excellence that she can week after week, month after month, is she ever going to become the world champion? No, it doesn't matter how much she thinks it's going to work, how much excellence and how much she actually follows through with it without missing. She's never going to become the world champion because she hasn't reached the threshold to become a world champion that the principal demands from her. And so when we were doing this with somebody and they saw the hours that they were putting in compared to what Jim Rohn says you must do, the threshold, they made an intelligent decision at that point that they couldn't make before because there was not the correlation in their mind. They could not even have the opportunity to make that intelligent decision. Oh, let me go back and reconstruct my hours and days of operation to, to equal my vision. But here's what happens. So many people don't even know that they're doing the 30 minute cardio, but they want to be the world champion and they're never going to get there. And this helps us to see that, identify it, and now make an intelligent adjustment. That's powerful, you guys. 
because they can see at that point, that's just a decision. Oh, if I do that, now I'll get the goal? I see that now, I didn't see that before. I'm gonna make the adjustment because I want the goal. It was just a decision. And remember Malcolm, when we were talking to somebody else and we didn't have this out figured out yet, this was a couple of weeks ago, and, and she understood this piece here was just discipline. She said, oh, I get it now, that's just discipline. And I considered myself a disciplined person, but I wasn't being disciplined with my business. That's easy, I'll just start doing it. But now we're going even deeper now with, so you could look at this as from two uh, perceptions. This is going to keep me from my goal, fear of loss, but I'm gonna do this and it's going to get me the goal as sure as the sun's gonna come up tomorrow morning, I'm gonna get the goal. There's two ways of looking at that and we do look at it both ways. But this one, if our vision's big enough, it pulls us to it, just like it did for me to take the picture in front of, I didn't care what anybody thought, I was in inception mode. Now, that my kids weren't, some of my kids weren't in inception mode. And some of the people were like, yeah, go for it, Dave, go for it, you know, and uh, believe. So. Again, just I, I wanted to make that point. That is a very important point to realize right there. That's what's going to change it for the person that now made the intelligent decision to adjust the hours of operation. Because they really wanted it. They kept doing the nine to 10 hours, let's say, every week. They didn't miss. They were disciplined around it. But they just realized, oh, I'm not at the threshold where I must be to get. So it wasn't a matter of their discipline, you guys. It was a matter of miscalculating the standards that brings the result they're looking for. And it was a disconnect and they could now identify it. That's huge. And I would say in isogenics, that's 90% of the people. 90% of the people want it, they just are miscalculating because they don't have the intelligence to make the correct calculation. The other 10%, they might be the pretenders, they're just not ready. But then we could go back and get into their, their vision, their compelling reasons. Anything else, Malcolm, before we toss this over to some other people? Well, you know, I, I just wanted to make sure I unpacked uh, the follow-up, you know, because um, when I did the follow-up, the lady that I called uh, was uh, started coming through the phone at me and, and is really excited. And she said, oh, yeah, well, we'll, we'll, um, we'll come see um, uh, 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 Dr. Bill Dr. Bill's laboratory on uh, Friday, and I, I've got some guests. I think there's going to be four of us, okay? So, uh, and imagine if I had just blown off that follow-up and just said, no, nah, I'm, I'm going to wait until the next day. Because I was, what, what happened, uh, you know, this, this um, seminar happened Tuesday, and, uh, and so Wednesday, I was kind of tired because, um, uh, you know, I, I uh, had had done a lot of stuff on Tuesday, and and I'm not in the mood, so I'm 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 kind of pushing myself, and I'm 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 figuring out strategies on how I'm going to get these calls done, okay? And I knew that once I got started, then uh, uh, well begun. Uh, what, what's that saying? Well, uh, it's well half begun is half done, right? Yeah. That's Mary Poppins, Mary Poppins. right? I <laughs> love yeah. Mary Poppins. Yes. And, and uh, so once I got started, I was into it. But it, the problem was getting started, was, was just breaking through, not betraying myself. Okay? Okay. Yep. Yeah. All right, we got it. All right, let's move forward. I, I appreciate that, Malcolm. Some big stuff right there. I'm glad it's recorded. Everybody's going to be able to go back and, and uh, get it. Um, on the efficient actions with Malcolm doing that, he's doing the efficient action. The efficient actions doesn't mean that everybody's gonna say yes. But what Jim Rohn knows, if you keep connecting with new people because you have your hours of operation and the efficient actions over the weeks, you're gonna build an organization that will outperform what you're making at your job. It, not everybody says yes, but if you keep connecting with new people, which your hours of operations demands you'll be doing, because if you're working 12 to 15 hours a day, you're not gonna be talking to the same two people for 12 to 15 hours a week who keep telling you no. You're gonna be bringing new people in. You're gonna be identifying new people and they will show up once you make the decision, you guys. You might say, well, I don't know that many people that keep me busy to talking to new people. Well, you haven't made the decision, that's why. 
So when you get to that point where you're doing the efficient actions, Jim Rohn says, look, an average starts to show up. You might talk to 10 people that week in those 12 to 15 hours, two of them enroll, or maybe one of them enrolls. But your efficiency improves. Your effectiveness improves over the two, three, four, five weeks. Now you're talking to 10 to 15 people a week, and three of them are signing up a week, and then four a week. It has to happen, you guys. Again, don't be mistaken in that the efficient actions, everybody's going to say yes. You're treating it like a job now. And you're, you're talking to new customers, new prospects, constantly, every week. If you're doing the efficient actions, there's going to be people that are going to be inspired to say yes. And if you're doing the vision work, you'll run into more of the right people. You'll still run into some of the people who aren't ready yet. But you don't even know what that connection may mean six months from now. So... Again, all of this comes together full circle. All right, anybody else? I'm gonna put this into unmute and just give some people an opportunity. I'm gonna use these classes. words just to share. Uh, share. Cybersecurity consulting and training solutions. Of team building. You all have the ability to unmute yourselves. Anybody wanna share anything? Hey, it's Wendy. <laughs> hey, Wendy. Oh, yeah, I, I, I wanted you to like, I was hoping that you would speak up. So, Wendy's a world champion bodybuilder, you guys, six hour or whatever the cardio is. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't unmute myself before when you were talking about it. Um, I, was, I was driving as well. But, um, wow, I, I feel like, so we've, I've worked on my vision before and um, we, I, I made my vision a couple weeks ago and then followed up yesterday with it and we and I rewrote it and then it was the third version of it that finally hit me and I and I feel I just put in the chat box that like I don't feel like any of this is is new I mean we always talk about our IPAs and our hours of operation but first but what was different was that like it's the dissection of my why that makes it more that I'm more excited to do my IPAs um, and and figure out how am I going to get it in get it to work and with the with the hours the the known hours of 12 to 15 hours per week to make this 12 to 15 hours of uh, productive efficient um, activities then I mean if I if I want to have the all my whys um, and it's just a matter of of following that blueprint so I don't know why it's different, but it's so, it's so different. It was a cool aha moment in that, you know, that masterminding that comparing the time and effort and energy you put into uh, your vision of being a world champion bodybuilder, right? And then seeing the, like Anna, the disconnect between your vision with isogenics and what you're willing to do and what you must do. There was a, being able to compare the two was, I'm going to use you forever now, you know, for your, your world champion bodybuilding and what you must do, your must changed in that moment, didn't it? Right. And you're talking about um, raising my standards. And I knew that I could, I, I chose to compete this time because I wanted a different result. I didn't want to just continue competing just to, com to compete and get the same result, which was still amazing on, on other terms, but I wanted more for myself. And I said, you know, if I, if what I do at baseline for competing is not getting me to a higher level, whether or not it be world champion, then I got to figure it out. I don't want to stay the same. And, and it's all about what Tony Robbins says about like pro, uh, progress makes us fulfilled and makes us feel happy. So it was, it was that decision of like, I don't want to stay the same. So when I, and knowing that I was going to be able to use whatever resources um like my success in bodybuilding and to put it like the reason why i competed this time was to figure out how to be successful in bodybuilding so that i could i could pull those lessons and put it towards my business so i feel like i fulfilled that step of, of winning world champion and now the next step is like flipping it to isogenics and being millionaire and every time you share like what the value that I get from you most powerfully is when you tell me when you're telling me the stories about like when you first the this the little switches at the very beginning and how how you got from where you were to who you are now and it's and it's the 
it, it's the feeling it's the the standards it's it's what's different it's it's the must now so um i appreciate you pulling apart my like what what i love about you is that you're okay with me sharing my vision and then you you tell me how to how i can be a more effective dreamer and that's that was the missing piece for me how do i how do i stay excited about my dream all the time and i just reread i i listened to our our chat last night and then this morning i woke up and i tweaked all the all the little things that you said and i added more emojis i added more emotions and feelings and i was like i could feel my face smiling the entire time and i'm like let's go let's do this i'm not going fast enough so i appreciate that and i feel like that's that's the biggest gift that i'm learning from you like how to dream bigger how to dream more effectively yeah awesome wendy thank you for sharing and uh thanks for uh, allowing us to use your example and giving us permission to do that it's it's going to be a great contrast for people to see uh, and compare and evaluate it's and you guys it's about your personal best it's not comparing yourself to somebody else michael jordan said look and tiger woods too Ro tony robbins talks about it. it's about their personal best reaching for their personal next level not comparing themselves to somebody else so where you're at right now is perfect because the next thing for you is your next personal best all right anybody else we went like two hours this is awesome i do our Super Saturday, we just pulled off a Super Saturday. Hey, Alex. Hey, that was so cool, Wendy. I, I just wanted to say, what's really fascinating to me is, you know, Wendy can set this personal goal to be world champion and, and nail it, you know? And then to take that and turn it into our business. And, and it just really s stuck out to me real quick that the difference of just being 100% in control of your own outcome when you're competing for your personal best and when you're in a business where who you're becoming in influencing others can be the thing that makes the track different for each person you know your level of influence and growth personally and your ability to step up in leadership is such a part of the journey where going for world champion is between you and you and your goals to yourself and so it's just fascinating to me that Wendy could say, okay, I'm gonna do this. I'm going all the way and go all the way. Congratulations, it's amazing. And then to say, okay, now what do I need to tweak and who I'm becoming in this business that I can then turn myself into the leader that helps other people become those champions as well. And it's just, I don't know, it just really got me and gave me a lot of goosebumps. So um, thank you for this training was absolutely off the hook. So good. Oh, it's good to hear your voice. Thanks, Alex. Yes. Can I just add quickly? Yeah. <laughs> um, the funny thing is, I just shared this with Denise that world champion wasn't even on my on my goal. It was just getting the top three um, in the world championships, and it wasn't until the very end where I started feeling like this might work that I fully embraced the what it felt like to be a world champion. I envisioned that over and over again the week before and it was so real to me that i was crying the entire time and then when it finally happened it was so normal for me i didn't even cry it was weird because <laughs> i'm such an emotional person but anyway i think that that point that i wanted that would just stood out to me was that um i am sh like i shoot i shoot I shot higher, and then when I raised my standards, I realized I could shoot even higher. So that that's an amazing wow. realization. Yeah. Totally. That's the stuff life is made of. Thank you, you guys. All right, anybody else real quick before we... Uh... All right, you guys. So now we have a blueprint, and uh, we will get this uh, organized to where it's a PDF, and you can download it and start utilizing it for yourself watch this video and do your own um, and uh, start working with your teams with it and, and become that leader, you guys. That's the ultimate, right? Climbing that staircase and bringing others along. That's heaven on earth. That's bringing heaven to earth. It's like a connection that's being made and, and we're here. We're the ones that have been called. So uh, just so much uh, gratitude. Thank you for showing up and, and being you and who you are. And I will recommend, along with leadership and self-deception i watched mr rogers last night 
Those two go together so well, you guys. I'm going to encourage you to go watch It's a Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. Uh, I'm buying that one for sure, and it will be a rewatch. It's kind of like Tony Robbins and uh, listening to him over and over. So I'll put a plug for Mr. Rogers. All right, you guys, have a great day and uh, finish strong. You're welcome. Bye, you guys. Thank you.